and you made us whole. We're different people. We are not in the world. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for a touch. Not only that benefited us in every kind of way, but spiritually our minds. Thank you for touching our minds, our bodies, our heart. Thank you for touching our lives. Bless us here today and touch us once again. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you for being here. Amen. On a very snowy morning. Amen. But that's all right. All right. God's business is still going on. And I thank him uh, just for being here. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the worship. And, amen. Uh, and we, we appreciate that is all that God is doing. There was a word on my mind uh, this week. It was just called overflow, overflow, overflow. I don't know whether or not it's, it's because I need money or what, but it was overflow. Overflow, it just, it, it, the word just followed me. And uh, I had to look and see what the meaning of overflow. Now, overflow, amen, that word itself, it deals with the supernatural abundance that comes, that is, from God. And many times it's not what you expected. It's, it's an overflow. Now, in the natural overflow, we think about a toilet. We think about uh, where Sister Paulette lives in New Orleans in the levee broke. And uh, the water overflowed and consumed a lot of people. Yes, it did. Overflow. When we think about overflow, we think about a building that's being built, especially a church, and there's a certain area that uh, has seating capacity. And they call it the overflow. Whenever the sanctuary is full, there's an overflow whereby uh, that the people could uh, sit in. Amen. Uh, God, he, I don't believe that he created us just to have enough, enough. But I'm careful now. I'm grateful for enough. You got to be real careful. I'm grateful for whatever he gives. But sometimes I don't believe we were created to have just enough, amen. But I was told that God was a God that was more than enough. And he was an overflow God. And he wants us to have an abundance so that you can be a blessing that is to somebody else. I believe that because he has the resources and he give it to you so much so until you can help those who are around you. Now there'll always be people around you that need to be helped. Jesus said the poor folks would be with us always. Somebody's going to always have a need. Amen. Am I right about that? You're always going to have a need. Now, some people have never experienced overflow. They've never experienced that. If you talk to them, and I can tell by the way they talk, they have never experienced what you call an overflow from God. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you see, you see, one, one touch, that's all you need, that is from God. One touch from God, amen, it'll take you from just having enough to more than enough. Am I right, y'all? Because some people know about the power, the power of overflow. Now, now people uh, will whisper in your ear, and I hear other folks say all kinds of stuff, and they'll tell you that, uh, and they'll try to convince you, believe it or not, that uh, you're not supposed to be blessed. You're not supposed to be blessed. I grew up in an era, era of pastors. They told you just uh, be humble. Don't never say nothing about money. But guess what? I, I, I looked around and said, I got a family here. You know, these babies over there sucking bottles and stuff, and you ain't going to say nothing about no money? You know, and, and, and the thing about it is, is that there are some people that believe that I'm okay. I don't have to be blessed. I don't have to be this, that, and the other. Now, if God wanted me just to have enough, why is his name more than enough? Why did somebody make a song that says, Jehovah Jireh, my provider? He is more than enough. Now, now that's what I've been listening to. I don't know about y'all. I've been listening to it all of my life. How many of y'all know? And, and, and I hear this. All the time, you understand. He's more than enough. 
He's a provider, you understand, you understand. And uh, uh, not only that, but God can open doors, amen. Uh, and, and, and the doors, an overflow can come out, an overflow of blessing. And, and, and it could be something that you've been longing for, something that you wanted in your life. Don't let people talk you out of overflow. It belongs to you. Overflow belongs to me. And, and, and I had to tell myself that, you understand. Now, God is El Shaddai. El Shaddai in the Hebrew means overflow. It means, in the Hebrew now, overflow. That's what it means. God is more than enough. And he need, uh, uh, and, and we need to do what? Thank God for overflow. Overflow is headed somebody's way right now. I don't know who it is. Amen. Amen. And we need to be in agreement with God so that we can get some blessing, which means you ought to live right, you ought to confess your sins, amen, and God ought to cover you with his grace and his mercy, and you ought to be the real Christian you ought to be. You understand? Because overflow is headed somebody way. He's about to shift things around, amen, in your favor. He's about to do what? Open a door that no man can shut. He's about to do what? Meet you at the right place at the right time. And God knows I'm a witness that he has done that. You didn't have to beg, borrow. You didn't have to beg. You didn't have to borrow. You didn't have to steal. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You didn't have to rob Peter to play, pay Paul. You didn't have to hit Mary in the head and take her purse. Am I right, y'all? But God met me there. What about y'all? Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? See, I look at a situation in the natural, and God looks at it in the supernatural. Am I right? Amen. And he has a way of increase, amen, that you thought that would never happen, amen, that can, and it can give us an overflow with blessings that you cannot contain. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, my Bible says that when you honor God, amen, blessings will do what? Chase you down. Now, that's what it says. The blessing is going to chase you down. You understand? And all of us, if we would do, do what? If we would put God first, blessings would come. You wouldn't have to go out and look for the blessing. The blessing would look for you. And that's the difference. Amen. Amen. Now, ever since I've been here, can I make a confession to y'all? Ever since I've been here, there have been people that have taken care of me and blessed me. Give God a hand clap of praise. And guess what? Guess what, y'all? It may not be who y'all thought it was. Is it the one driving the big cars, the one that got five red houses? Not necessarily all the time. It could be somebody that got a rush of what? A rush of overflow. And say, well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to bless my... Matter of fact, these shoes I got on right now. Let me show them to you. <laughs> I don't know who's telling y'all that I'm crazy, poor, busted, and all of that, but I serve a people who believe in overflow. That's what I do. I don't know what you're doing now. You know what I'm saying? Some nice food. I don't, I don't like to wear them in the snow. Overflow. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? There's always a blessing looking for you. Amen. Not just money, but an overflow of what healing. Healing can do what? Flow from one body to another one in your family. Amen. You see, there's an overflow of Bible, he, a Bible reading and people meeting together and praying. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It's an overflow you can receive that you're not even prepared for. That, you just read it in the story. Did you hear her? You just read it. And people read stuff and they don't believe it. They just don't believe it. Believe it or not, one lady told me, once you reach 70 years old, and I actually believe this, you can brag about how old you are as long as you live. When you reach 70 years old, that's all God promised you. Three score and 10. Anything over, guess what? You ought to be happy. Sit around there, oh, I'm 92. 
you're living in the overflow. You don't even supposed to be walking around. You're supposed to be dead, sleeping in your grave. But God gave you overflow. People don't know what overflow is. He said, all I promise you is three score and ten. When I got to 70 years old, I got me a dance together. Horace Shepherd Jr. said, how old are you? I said, when I got 70, I went over to the church, turned off the lights and just looked around in my office and said, thank God. Thank God. He said, I didn't know you was that old. He said, I ain't going to celebrate my birthday. I sure celebrate my 70th birthday. You stupid. God gave me overflow. Hey, man, what, what the brother named to come to church here 90 something years old? Overflow. Sister Guillory, about 90. Overflow. God can give you. I'm living in the overflow. I'm enjoying my overflow too. Some folks think I'm not. I'm enjoying my, I got peace in my overflow. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, my Bible says in Hebrew, that says 17 and 20. He said, you see, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, am I right about that? Nothing will be impossible for you. Mustard seeds, faith is very small faith. You can have a large cup and you can have a small cup. Am I right about that? You see? Faith, faith, you can have that. Faith, you can have small dreams, you can have small vision. Amen. But that's not going to stop and keep you from having a big blessing. You see, there's a big blessing that can come from God, even, you got a, even if you've got a small cup. You see, God is not going to do what? He's not going to stop pouring. He's going to pour until that little small cup does what? Run over. Because he has overflowing blessings. That's what he had. Luke, 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 you just read it. Chapter 5, chapter 5. Now, Peter, amen, has been working all night fishing. Amen. He did the best he could. Blessed his heart. He's a skilled mariner. Am I right? He went out that night. He called night. That night, morning came, and he's cleaning his net. And so Jesus walked up to him, and he probably never seen Jesus before in his life. and said, can I borrow your boat? So Peter said, well, yeah, go ahead on. He said, well, I want to teach the people uh, from the shore, and he did that. Now, when he got through, uh, uh, finished teaching the people, and he wanted Peter to know, well, Peter didn't know, but he said, you are about to receive an overflow, an overflow, believe it or not. He said, I'll, what I want you to do is go back out there, we know you caught nothing, and put down your nets and receive these fish. Well, Peter was very, he, he, he was very good at his fishing. He knew his craft. Not only that, he was a professional fisherman. He knew when the fish was biting, when the fish wasn't biting. He knew about the season it was. And he said, now is not the right time. This is not the right time. Because after all, you understand, I've already been out there all night. You understand? He almost talked himself out of a blessing. We do that sometimes. I declare y'all talk yourself out of a blessing. You done it. Ain't no need of you telling no lie up in the church. You have talked yourself. Out of a blessing. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you talk yourself. That's why you're in trouble right now. Out of your own blessing. He said, not, nah. you understand, you see. And then he, he almost, after he almost talked himself out of a blessing, believe it or not, nevertheless, he said, I'm gonna just going to take this man as his word, Jesus as his word, you understand. Now, after people, Peter went and threw the net out, verse 6 said, he caught so many fish until the net broke. The net broke. He caught so many fish. Amen. He had to call other boats to come over and help him. To help him get together the fish. You understand? There were so many fish until the boat began to sink before he made it to the shore, y'all. Oh, Lord have mercy. The boat was sinking before he made it to the shore. Amen. Now, Peter caught so many fish. Uh, Peter uh, has caught a lot of fish at different times before, but he has never had a net-breaking experience. And that's what I'm asking God for right now. Let's give God a hand clap of faith. We need a net-breaking experience that is with God. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, 
And we know that y'all have seen God work. Ain't nobody talking about what you haven't seen and all that. But I just stopped by here to tell somebody that God has some of these net-breaking experiences. They're coming our way. Favor is coming your way. Amen. Favor that you have not been prepared for. I'm talking about increase. I'm talking about real increase. Amen. Increase is such an amazing thing that you can't do what you can't handle it by yourself. You say, I got so much, you bring your boat over here. I got so much, bring your children over here. I got so much, I can help my church, the community. I can help, I can help them next door. Because this is a net breaking experience. Y'all ever been there? Anybody in here ever been there? You ever had a net breaking experience? You ever had increase in a way? And I believe that overflow, amen, was already, has already been designed for me and it's been designed for you. I don't believe overflow belongs to Peter and Peter alone. You understand? God, somewhere, is some child right now, crying, has the grace, you understand? That is to go to college, live in an impoverished situation. But God has a full ride waiting for that child at the University of Michigan. That's overflow. Is that overflow, y'all? That's overflow. There's a promotion waiting for somebody. Somebody that's way down here on the totem pole is about to be moved up on their job. And when they, God moved them up, he's going to give them six figures. That is an overflow. Help me, somebody. You got a job and you don't even supposed to have it. Am I right about that? You don't have the education, but God put people in your life and those people move you up to a place. I thank you, God. Right now, God, when I build my house, you put the right people in my life. Thank you, God. I'm praising God right now. God can put the right people. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I, mean, I don't have to borrow all my life. You understand? God can put the right people in your... I'm not talking about stupid, crazy people that's going to give you something today and want to tell everybody about tomorrow, tomorrow or take it back. I'm not talking about people. God can put the right people in your life. A check came in the mail. It was able to get you out of debt and you had plenty left over, believe it or not. You wasn't looking for the check, but the check was looking for you. Ooh, y'all don't understand yet. You don't understand that yet. Lord, have mercy. Somebody really need to help me. Ooh, Jesus, I felt that. I, I got to pause for a moment. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. And then when your knees are met, amen, God has already lined you up to have more than enough. You have so much left over. After the feeding of 5,000 people, Jesus said, we got so many fragments left over and fish and barley loaves, we got to put them on the boat. And you live like you live. I, I, I just can't understand that. I just can't understand a person not praying for overflow. Well, I'm satisfied. Well, you might be crazy. I, I don't know. You too satisfied. I'm satisfied with this little bit that I got and all of that. You said about God. That's El Shaddai. He has more that is than enough. He has more than enough. Help me, somebody. The scripture said in Malachi that when you bless God with your tithes and offering, he will open up a window and pour you out a blessing whereby you cannot contain. He'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you cannot receive. That's overflow. God moves us, moves us into a net breaking, cannot contain situation. You understand? And I pray all the time, God move our home, move our church, Amen. You see, move our bodies. We're healed. We need to be healed. Move our people into a net breaking, cannot contain situation. Psalm uh, 65, it says, it says that, it says that thy ground, thy ground. Yeah, amen. Excuse me. No, thy crown, thy crown, excuse me, the years of goodness and fatness that is with beautiful harvest. And even the hard places 
it says you're still going to have an overflow. Let me explain it. He says that you can have a farm and some of the land are good land, but some of the land are hard land and fallow ground. But when you break it up, it's going to yield just as much as the good land. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, the devil wants you to be worried about money all day. I know how he works. I know exactly how he worked, but I believe in overflow, and I believe all of the hard places, amen, and my life could be broken up, and it can yield a beautiful thing, believe it or not, you understand. Psalm 23 said, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies, but hold up, my cup does what? It runneth over. It runs over. Amen. And in these hard times, this is what we need. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Lord, give us overflow. Overflow. You understand? Overflow that can carry us through, that can bring us through, that can bring us out. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It's mine. It belongs to me. God, give it to me. Believe it or not, overflow. Overflow. Amen. Whereby I can be a bigger blessing to somebody, you see. And I'm so glad that we can do what? Be surrounded by God's favor. My brother, who ain't claiming nothing. Not one thing. He's claiming nothing. He told me one day, he said, you know what? I just believe God's favor was on our family. He ain't even had to tell me that. I know God's favor, that is, was on our family. Amen. You see, and I thank God for favor. Don't you thank God for favor? We can be surrounded by favor. And it's not enough to just think it, but we do what? You see, we give life to our faith by doing what? By speaking a word of faith. Now, God's word, it gives us life. And if we dwell in it, it will give us what? It will move you up to eternal life. Life, eternal life. Am I right? You see? And it will be your shield. You understand? You, you, you know, it, if you dwell in it, if you dwell in it, my Bible tells me that God will supply every need according to his riches and glory. And God has done that for me. I don't have a cousin in town, a brother, or nothing like that. But guess what? God has blessed me through the church. I ain't stupid. I know where my blessing come from. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Lord, have mercy. People will bless you. Overflow will come. Believe it or not, you see, I heard a, 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 a guy say uh, some time ago, he said that uh, when you get in your car, you have a windshield, amen, in front of your car, and uh, you have a little bitty rear view mirror. And the reason why the windshield is so large and the rear view mirror is so small is that because what happened in your past is not as near important as what's going to happen in your future. Some of y'all love looking back, looking in the rearview mirror. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But the church wasn't like this when Ray Jackson was here. Well, you wouldn't like this when Ray Jackson was here. How many of y'all know, know what I'm talking about? You see, you see, and, and, and it's, and that's an important factor. Amen. You see, you see, and, 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 and it's not near as important, that is, as your future. Amen. You see, and, and, and the thing about it is, you can change your life by doing what? By asking God to edit your words, especially when you ask him for something. Make sure you know what you're asking him for. Lord, I, I want another job. You don't even have another job lined up. You're going to quit that one? Well, I think I'm quitting Friday. Lord, you help me. My finance is going to be cut off altogether. That's all right. God save me. No, no, no. You, 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 you have some issues. But you need to get with somebody. And you need to talk about it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Editing your words, you understand. Because what? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue, y'all. You don't even know what you're asking for. You, you don't know what you're asking for. You're dead in the water. And that's why people are in the shape 
that they're in, you understand. Now, the Bible said, given it shall be given unto you. What? First of all, you got to give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, shaking together and pressing over. I believe that's in order. I believe that you reap what you sow. I, I actually believe that. I believe you got to sow money to get money, but it all ain't about money. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, I'm not just talking about a financial blessing, you understand, you see, but encouragement to other people, amen, is something everybody can give. How many of y'all are encouraging people? I don't like being around people. You don't. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all? Encouragement to others is something everybody can give. Your parents your parents are supposed to encourage you. You understand? Somebody needs what you have to give, but you won't give it. I ain't talking about no money. They need what you have. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And it's not money. It may be your time. It may be a listening ear. It could be an arm. Some people just want a hug. They just want a shoulder that you can cry on. I told my wife this week, I need some prayer. I missed the Saturday morning prayer meeting. So I went to a Sister Tanya, it was announcing a prayer meeting. I went to it. That's the best thing I could have done. So people are praying, laying hands, touching, hugging one another. The best thing you can do is pray. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? We need an abundance of God's overflow flowing, you understand? So set the tone for your day, set the tone for your month, set the tone for your marriage, set the tone for your job, set the tone for your church, because if you don't set it, the devil is going to set it for you. Am I right? You better set the tone for some things. You better set the tone for your mind. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. We got to be very careful right through here because God is continuing to work. And I'm going to continue to work. I lost everything I had. My wife had to put on clothes in a store. That's right. Had to put on clothes in a store. But oh, if you wait on the Lord, he will bless you over, and I'm a living witness, that he will bless you he will come through. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, he'll do it. I know he will do it. You're in the second Corinthians. The New English Bible said this, believe it or not. He said that and God is able to make all grace overflow. Now, some translators and say it abound. This one says overflow to you. So that because you have enough of everything in every way, at all times, you will overflow in every good work. Thank you, Lord, for favor. Amen. God, amen. I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for your favor. I wouldn't be here today. Y'all, I had, I had COVID. I had COVID. I don't know what COVID did to y'all. That COVID beat me up so tough until a nurse had to call me and say, don't you go back nowhere in no five days. You too old actually said that. She said, you can't play with no five days. I must have stayed in the house a long time. Went out one time, I said, I can't take it. I came back in, I ran in. Can't take it. But God made sure he brought me. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God's favor. You wouldn't either, you wouldn't either. You, wouldn't. you just don't know no better, you understand. Favor in sickness, favor, favor that protects me when I'm in an accident. Favor, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about when I go to treatment? Favor in my old age. I'm talking about God's favor. I get sick of folk who calling themselves Christians can't give. Y'all stink, you do it. I get tired of that. Y'all out there stink too. You can't give in God's favor. It's upon your life. You know what God has done for me over and over, and you can't give. You can't give. I have traveled as far as four and a half to five hours. For saints, uh, parents in here that was die, have died. I remember one time I went up almost to Mesquite. You understand? I prayed for people. 
I've driven and done this and that and the other, and you don't understand God. Favor. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about the favor of God being on your life. Favor. Favor. You understand? God favor surrounds us. Amen. And it will allow us to do what? Come into God's promised land. It will allow you to come into a new Jerusalem. You'll experience something you never experienced before in your life. Amen. Favor can find you. Amen. And you can have a net breaking. I cannot contain experience. And that's what we all need. Y'all need a blessing right now. Some of these people need a blessing right now. You understand? Young men, old men, young women, old women, they need a blessing. Favor can find you. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The word favor is in the Bible 120 times. It's in the scripture. Favor is something, amen, that God does. Favor is not something you find with the dough dash in the, in the curbside and all of that. Favor comes from God. No curbside, nothing going to give you no favor. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Spending that little bit of money you got ain't going to give you no favor? Amen. You understand, but favor comes from God. And guess what it does? And it's activated by faith. It's activated by faith. It's activated by faith. You ever seen me quit? I've been here almost 28 years. If my house burned down, I don't quit. Money low, I ain't I don't quit. Money been low before. You think I'm going to quit? Hold it up, put it in my suitcase and go home. You're dealing with the wrong person. You're dealing with the wrong person. There was a write-up years ago about some of the football players at my high school, and they said one thing about Sugar Howard, this one, and they said David Lund, they won't quit. You better watch them. You can be leading by 20 points. They're going to come back on you. I ain't got no quitting in me. If you got quitting in you and you talking quitting, you're not going to make it. You won't make it. You will not make it. You're dead in the water. I don't have no quitting in me. How many of y'all know I played sports in college and in high school? There ain't no quitting in me. I'm going to fight until the end. I'm coming out to my new Jerusalem. You understand? Stop putting limitations on God. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, he don't live at the end of your street, and God ain't shoveling no snow. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? God don't take no vacation and go to Florida. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? God don't ride in no, no one of them cars down there at the car show. And y'all, God don't eat no hamburger. Amen. You got to trust the supernatural. If you're going to be blessed, you have to trust supernatural power. You understand? You got to do that. Jesus said, son, you need to go back for a great check. You understand? Now, this ain't another mariner talking to you. This is God Almighty. That said, if you try it once again, you'll have a net-breaking experience you never, never, ever experienced before. Nothing is too difficult. Not for him to handle it. He can open the Red Sea. He can feed you in the desert. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, Luke, Luke said, don't worry about anything. He said, by worrying, you can't add nothing to your life. Not one cubit, not one single hour, not one single day, not one single biscuit. He said, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. But all you have to do is just trust God. Trust him because what? Overflow is on the way. Overflow is on the way. But I believe that somebody is going to, when you experience, just call me on the phone and say, you know what? I just experienced overflow. I'm talking about real overflow. I ain't talking about you financing something, you understand, and all of that. I'm talking about real overflow. You hear me? Real 
overflow. And it comes only from God. You ain't going to get that off no internet. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You think you can get it off of that. They got you fooled. You ain't going to get it off of that. Overflow comes from God. Stand on your feet and let's pray. Anybody in here want to pray, pray concerning overflow? And, and, and having that kind of increase that you need. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, I need an overflow in my health. Amen. But I must confess, I need to stop eating some stuff too. You know what I mean? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I need to stop eating some stuff. That's just all there is to it. But either after you stop eating things, you still got to depend upon God. I've seen some things in my life. But God has a way of giving us overflow and everything else we need. Amen. He's going to give your church and my church as I meet with pastors. We're trying to encourage one another. Because this is a transitioning period. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. COVID had turned my life around and yours too. We don't want to hear about you. Uh, I can't be touched. Uh, I'm all right. No, you're not. I, I'm not over right. I, I like, I like uh, shrimp fried rice. It went up from about ten fifty to sixteen dollars. Can't get my shrimp fried rice like I used to. Y'all ain't fooling nobody. You hurt. You ain't fooling nobody. You live in America with me. You hurt. Don't know. I don't want to play that game. Folks be told, oh, I'm all right. You know, I had COVID, but guess what? Ain't nothing happened. Well, how you had COVID? Ain't nothing happened. We need to really ask God to overflow. Anybody else want to come? You don't want to overflow. Overflow? I want it. I want it for my church, my community. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? For my family? I want it for everybody. You understand? Because God is able. God is able to just bless us over and over again. And he can do it. He can do it. He wants you to, you to open up the windows so that he can pour you out a blessing. A blessing. He wants to do that. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Make us a Peter. We need to be a Peter. We need to go back out in the deep one more time and fish. Not because we want to, but because God said it. And we need to experience the nets breaking. We need to experience calling other boats. We had to call another boat and fill it, and fill it with fish. There's another one you need to call it, another one. We want that kind of overflow in our church, in our finance, in our lives. Bless us, God. We have things that other people can use. But God, we just ask that you would bless us with the kind of abundance whereby the world can look around and say, you know what? There must be a God touching that person's life. Thank you, God, for everything you give us. Bless us once again and I help you. Just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say overflow. Thank you. Thank you.